Hey guys, it's Tyler as always. The conversation came up in Rick's Discord. As you can tell, I'm kind of still getting over my lost voice, which is why this took me a few days longer than other things. But the conversation came up of opposed roles, yes or no. Uh, Big Bad RPG suggested that one, so thanks to him. This is an idea I've had for a little while that I wanted to talk about, which is a simple solution that I'm surprised no D20 system, or GM for that matter, has used other than myself. If you have, please write in the comments that you have, because I think it's a good, really good idea. Uh, and that is the AC problem. AC has a number of problems. Uh, the late, great Shauner and I talked about that in prior streams. It is too static a number to be representing so many active forms of defense. Um, there, I remember a, a 4chan post, actually, on uh, um, the RPG uh a uh, forum was complaining about D and D never including a means of defense of well you have a weapon. If you have a weapon, you can clearly defend yourself much more effectively than if you have your bare hands. But having a weapon doesn't make your AC go up at all. And I thought, yeah, that is a really uh, important consideration there. But without changing the way the game works, fundamentally, you make things a lot clunkier by having each weapon have both a defense and an offense score, and then uh, you get closer and closer to representing a video game, but in pencil and paper, and that's not, that's not fantastic. Uh, you don't want the GM to have to be a computer on the fly, if you can at all help it. So... A more elegant way to do this, I, I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out. Just replace the base 10 in the armor class with a die roll. <laughs> now, this does a couple of things. This gives you variance so that something with a super high armor class isn't just this um, unhittable wall of armor that you're just constantly whacking at and missing and missing and missing and no, you don't penetrate its armor, no, you don't. And you as the GM are starting to run out of different ways to describe you don't hit it or you don't damage it. It can help with that. So it can help, uh, and it can do the opposite and allow uh, a squishier character like the uh, wizard to actually get out of the way sometimes by the skin of their teeth. So, it can add interesting variants uh, from both ends. It also, as I says, takes the load off of the GM, and I think this is the important part, and gives the player ways to describe how their character is actually defending. I think for a while I tried player describe successes in Pathfinder 1st Edition, that's my D20 game of choice. But there's no reason this wouldn't work in any other D20 system. That is to say, pretty much any variant of D&D 3rd edition and onward. But part of the problem with that is you're still very one-sided and it feels like there's not enough back and forth. And it can feel like a player's just monologuing what they're doing to a character and then you, the GM, are just monologuing whenever a monster or an NPC or whatever is hitting a player's character because he takes a swing at you with his sword roll. And he gets past your defenses and stabs you into the uh, the uh, gaps in your armor, going through the chainmail voiders or whatever it happens to be. Well, no, now, whenever you're rolling for your attack... The guy you're trying to hit is also rolling to try and defend. And now this gives an opportunity to describe, you know, how you're using your sword to deflect. And maybe that organically, through the description, adds uh, adds to your role. It adds to your armor class. 
where you're describing that. Also, all of these other things that are so seldom described in the hitting description. Uh, you know, if you have a ring of deflection, maybe you roll and it's a really close contested roll. And so it is just by that ring, that that invisible aura of almost magnetic or anti-gravitational force just twists that sword out of the way at the last second. Maybe that's how you describe it. Um, maybe you have some sort of luck bonus to your AC and it is a literal, the guy almost hits you, but he just trips on a pebble that nobody noticed was there until just now. <laughs> something ridiculous happens because he was one off of hitting you or something like that. Um, and it can also allow you to set up your later attacks. It, it sets up a, a positional conversation, if you will, right? I swing, uh, instead of just missing, now let's say you have a two-handed sword and you describe how you wrench the guy's axe out of the way. Well, now it sets up when you go, as the guy's axe is wrenched out of the way, I try to bash him in the face with my pommel. Now the guy with the axe, he has something to respond with. Maybe he has a shield in his other hand and he tries to deflect with the shield. And you can think of what each hand is doing and what the footwork is doing. You know, you have a dodge bonus to AC. Maybe instead of the wrenching and deflecting, you're just dodging out of the way. And you don't need a big, you don't need a lot of mechanics to add this depth. You just need the, uh, the breadth of description ability. And that just requires that you, you know, do your film study, do your, uh, uh, just thinking <laughs> and, uh, get creative, get ideas from places of uh, different ways to describe how your character would defend themselves. That's I think is a huge lost opportunity in things like this. And I think this is a way simpler way to do it. And I think it might make the D20 one of the best systems for doing this. All you have to do is remove that base 10. It's such an odd thing that it's there, the base 10 to AC. Because it's not for anything else. I have a feeling it's there for this idea of speeding up combat where maybe in D and D historians, let me know if this is uh, more than speculation. I wonder if in test versions of third edition, they found it was way too slow to have attacker defender both roll. Because in my mind, it's really not while you're rolling and doing the numbers to attack, well, the other guy already knows he's defending, so he just rolls. And instead of this awkward silence where the guy just goes, ugh, or, you know, maybe adds a I, I stumble back from being hit, they can actually add their own description. That, that to me, is really interesting, and it it goes a long way. This, this one change goes such a long way in fixing the problem. It, again, does add variance, so uh, if you're not... But you're playing a D20 system, so variance is kind of the thing. And probably your system has means to deal with variance. If you're worried about balance, because, of course, armor class does not scale with level, but base attack bonus does scale with level in some of these games, or weapon proficiency, or what have you, We'll do a video about balance in the future and why it doesn't actually matter that much. Likewise, however, there is... Uh, what it, What is the word to say about this? You can simply take the classes or character, whatever your game uses, that should be good at defending themselves and apply a base attack bonus in retrospect so that they are basically rolling the same thing as their base attack or you could simply add their base attack bonus to their defense that's a good way to represent how they are defending with their weapons as well uh, because and and for my simulationists out there that's a, quite a good description uh, quite a good way to envision how a character is defending themselves 
because the ability to attack means that you understand attacks, means that you understand holes in one's defense. You can't really, except for at a very high level or a very low level, be very good at attacking but not have a great defense or be very good at defense but not be good at attacking because it means you understand the other side of it, right? Um, so barring some edge cases, I, I think that's a good representation there. Let me know your guys' thoughts. There are some games where I think this does get too slow, this opposed rolling. Uh, Shadowrun 5th Edition and 6th Edition are my go-to examples. Uh, I, I don't think you need to roll to see if you hit, roll to see if the guy dodges out of the way, roll to see if the guy's armor functions, right? Because armor doesn't... The armor isn't an animate object that's has free will, is doing things in the world. I think an animate object, says a hard and fast rule, should simply be they should just have a difficulty class number you shouldn't be rolling for it right the the 20 foot wall is is 20 foot high all the time <laughs> you roll to see if you succeed in that moment at climbing up it not to see suddenly that wall is 30 foot high and you just didn't notice it before right and that's another thing that you know the fixed ac problem is, is it, it takes away a bit of player agency in describing how they're defending. So yeah, short one. Um, I could feel my voice slowly killing me here. So I'm going to go and I'll probably do a follow up to this one uh, potentially because I, I know I rambled and I know there's other stuff I want to say, but I'm going to save my voice for now. I just wanted to get this out of here because I said I'd make it like five days ago and didn't. So. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys. Thanks.